is there a stock market crash coming in your near future? And I believe that there is. And one of the people that I have been following uh, since the very beginning of my interest in gold and silver, back in about 2002, maybe it was even 2001, I started reading uh, Adam Hamilton of Zeal LLC. And we had an article on our website. We've been uh, promoting his articles whenever he comes out with ones that are pertinent to our sector. And uh, uh, so on our website at goldsilver.com on the news page, uh, you'll see Adam Hamilton's articles appear uh, every once in a while. And uh, he uh, does some very, very good analysis. Uh, now, I'm dyslexic, and to me, this chart has a little too much information on it. It makes it really hard for me to understand what's going on at first glance. I like, when I, when I try and create charts, I try and take as much stuff off of them as possible so that I can make my point. Uh, and so I just want to explain this to you because it's probably, uh, probably a little bit busy for you as well if this is the first time you've seen uh, some of Adam's work. But he's an excellent analyst and I, I just want to, what he's talking about here are long wave uh, bull markets and bear markets. These are called secular uh, bulls and secular bears. And within them, there will also be bull and bear markets, but these play out roughly over uh, seven, you know, 15 to 20 year periods. So they're third of a century cycles busted into two halves roughly. This is the S&P 500 index. So it's the 500 largest companies in America and it's a, uh, an index of their stocks. And then the red line is the numerical value, the, the uh, points on the index. The blue line, he's taken the consumer price index, the government's CPI, which is actually, I call it the CP lie because they always understate inflation, but that, that, that makes this an even more conservative measure. If we used, for instance, uh, the uh, consumer price index that John Williams creates at, at Shadow Government Statistics, which is based on the pre-1980 method of calculating inflation, uh, the stock market would look a whole lot worse than it does here. But what this shows, this is the S&P 500, the red line, and it goes along here. You know, there's the peak in 2000, uh, the uh, crash that bottomed in uh, uh, 2003, I think it was, uh, the peak in 2007, and the crash that bottomed in 2009, and then the peak today. So. Uh, unadjusted by it for inflation, uh, the peak that we're at today is much, much higher than the peak that we had in 2000. But if you adjust it, adjust it just using the government's CPI, you come out with us just getting back to where we were 15 years ago. So if you had been invested, if you had invested in the stock market in the year 2000 and just held your position, you have now broken even when it comes to purchasing power according to the government's uh, method of calculating it. It's actually much worse than that, which means we have not even come up to the previous peak. But what he's showing here is that uh, this is 1966 to 1982 was the last secular bear downtrend. And what you see is that there's a bear market, a bull market, a bear market, a bull market, a bear market, a, a little bull market, and then this bear, and then it finally gets into severe undervaluation. Um, now, I've explained price earnings ratios before, PE ratios. It's the price of a stock divided by how much earnings that company has uh, in a year, divided by how many shares of stock. So the earnings per share, so the price of the stock divided by the earnings per share. And uh, the, this bear market didn't end until the uh, P.E. ratios hit 6.6 .6 on the S&P 500. So this is the average for all of those companies. It, the earnings were, uh, the price of the stock was 6.6 .6 .6 times higher than the annual earnings for each share. And then we went into this secular uh, bull market that experienced a few uh, cyclical bear markets within it, like the uh, crash of 89, 
or 80, 87, I'm sorry, the stock market crash of 87. Uh, there's a correction here in 91. Uh, there's a big crash here with long-term capital management and the uh, Russian uh, default in uh, 98. Uh, but basically, this is one of the great bull markets in history. And it, the S&P peaked with P.E. ratios at 43.8, which is absolute insanity. Companies were super overvalued at that point and had to come down. Now, fair value is around uh, 12 to 15, that range. Uh, anything under 10 is an extreme bargain. And so stocks are undervalued and anything over 18 or 20 is bubble territory. So this was hyper bubble, super bubble territory. And then it crashed down to 25.5, which means that, that, that this bear market was not over with yet. Uh, and that was the crash that bottomed in 2003. And then uh, peaked in 2007 with the real estate boom at 21.3 and crashed down to 11.6. So it visited fair value in 2009, but it never visited undervalued. And then we went up to 24.1, which is back up in bubble territory. And we've been uh, quite a few years now, since 2009, we've been in this economic expansion. And every two to nine years, there's a recession without fail so far. And so there, the likelihood of one coming this year or every year the likelihood is greater and greater that there's a recession coming. And it took the creation of $3 trillion to do this. Uh, but what he is arguing is that this is actually a secular bear market, and it's been punctuated by these cyclical bull markets. And this was just another one of them. And the reason that it got out of this channel here that he's drawn, like that channel there, and went up so high, is the creation of $3 trillion by the Federal Reserve. And so we're going to post the link below the uh, video here. I invite you to take a look at Adam's work and, and read what he's got to say. But uh, when it comes to P.E. ratios, this spills over into a lot more information I want to talk about. Again, here's a chart that's a little bit uh, busy. But instead of using, I've been presenting this long-term data from Dr. Robert Schiller of Yale University that does the Case Schiller indexes. And, uh, uh, but I've been presenting it in a very simplified chart that, that I have made. I just wanted to see you to see his chart that I haven't done anything with. It's, it's not my chart, but to show you what his conclusion is. Again, anywhere from uh, uh, 12 to 15 is fair value in this range. And anything over 20 is bubble. And anything under 10 is extremely undervalued and stocks are a bargain. And this blue line is the P.E. ratios. The red, red line is uh, long-term interest rates. And one thing that I really find interesting, you can see how it sort of goes counter to the uh, moves in the stock, the P.E. ratios in the stock market here. Uh, if you take a look at a chart where these long-term interest rates go back another century, what you'll see is that they varied in this sort of very narrow band. And then we created the Federal Reserve. And it's sort of like, whoa, <laughs> it's a car, you know, drunk on the freeway, out of control, spinning. And they go to very low value, low interest rates and then super high interest rates that the world had never seen before. <laughs> and, and then we're uh, now getting down to uh, interest rates that are absolute historic lows with negative interest rates. I mean, that's something that has never happened before. And it's ever since the advent of central banking around the planet that we've, where we seem to be, have spun out of control. But what you see here again, and I've pointed this out many times, is that once you visit bubble territory, uh, once a bear market starts, it, it bounces on the way down like this. And that does not end until you reach severe undervaluation, overvaluation, undervaluation, overvaluation, undervaluation, and so on. And so these are just a couple of the bounces that we're probably going to experience on the way to severe undervaluation of the stock market when it's time to get out of things like gold and silver and uh, you know, uh, I don't know what other things will be in a bubble at the time that stocks are bottoming. I'm expecting that gold and silver will be.
And so that's where I have placed my bet, basically. Uh, so this is Dr. Schiller's data, but what he's showing here is that uh, the 10-year trailing uh, PE is at 26.77. This is super bubble territory again. It's insane, and it can't last forever. Uh, then I want to show you uh, a. This is from a Federal Reserve Board of San Francisco, Federal Reserve Bank of San Francisco. Uh, a couple of their researchers made a paper back in 2011, and it's about the uh, the middle age old age age ratio and how that drives the stock market. And uh, I've shown many charts of. P.E. ratios and, and uh, the information that Dr. Robert Schiller pre presents. Uh, and I've also shown, uh, made presentations on demographics. And I have this really pretty uh, presentation where you can see the age groups moving throughout time. And what they have done here is they've taken the uh, 40 to 49 year old age group as middle age and the 60 to 69 year old age group as old age. And they've just made a ratio of this. And so uh, here you have more middle aged people than old age. And then here you've got uh, more old age than middle age. And here the baby boom comes in and you've got more middle age than old age again. And, and then we're going, the baby boom is aging. So we're going to have more old age than middle age. And so they wrote this paper in 2011 and they were looking at the correlation between that and the P.E. ratios of the stock market. And there's an extremely high correlation. And so this is information that I've been presenting differently for years, but I, I find it fascinating to try and create a crystal ball so that you can see into the future. And when you take the uh, uh, middle age, old age demographic and you plot that wave out into the future, it's predicting P.E. ratios far, far lower. Now this is 2011 and the P.E. ratios have bounced back up here. So 20, remember Robert Schiller's chart in the mid-20s. And uh, so that the blue line is the P.E. ratio. That also gives us something called a head and shoulders pattern <laughs> on the P.E. ratios, which then would predict a very low P.E. ratio out in the, out in the future. Now, um, uh, one thing that this does not take into account, and one of the reasons that uh, P.E. ratios have risen instead of follow, following this line, is that this is all demographic data within the United States, and the stock markets are becoming more and more and more globalized. And so as problems develop in Europe and people rush to the U.S. for safety and invest here, it causes uh, stocks and P.E. ratios to go up and uh, causes a bubble. This also does not take into account currency creation. It's a Federal Reserve paper, but it doesn't take into account their own currency creation. Those two things have helped push uh, the uh, PE ratios counter to this trend. But it's more evidence that this is just that the current stock market, uh, bull market that we've seen in the past since 2009, is just a cyclical bull within a secular bear and that it's probably peaking and it's going to continue down. And one thing about that, um, I have, uh, you know, I was on the Federal Reserve's website and I was making all these charts and I was uh, going over uh, government debt and government spending and uh, doing some research on that. And in the uh, federal government current tax receipts, so the government's income, the revenues, the tax receipts used to go up and when there would be a recession, they would go flat and then they'd go up and they'd go flat. Well, what's happened though in the last decade is the government has become financialized. It's basically an extension of Wall Street. The uh, red line here is the Wilshire 5000 total uh, full market cap index. And the blue line is the tax revenues that the government takes in. And now, when the stock market crashes, so does the government's income, and that means deficits go way up, and that means there's an emergency, and that means they pass a whole bunch of new laws, and that means you lose some of your freedom and your taxes go up. <sighs> uh, 
So that's it for this presentation, but it sort of leads me into the next presentation. And it has started to roll over. This is out of the local newspaper in Los Angeles. Home prices jumped 17% in the house land, at Southland. Do we have a housing bubble? No, we've got a hyper bubble. Inflation adjusted home index price back to 1890. Home prices are just in Lunaticsville. <clears throat> the home building industry, this is the insider uh, buy-sell ratios. Now, to understand what this is, you need to know what the average